I must say I appreciate the firmness of your position. Next time we have a conference, I'll need to make sure to pack an extra bottle of wood. Situation log update. Boss, you better not be busy. Uh, can I call you back, Ambassador? Yes, thank you. Right, I get that we're an egalitarian society, but that's just a weird sentence. Are you busy? Yes, I was just hard at work trying to stabilize relations with Yorbia after the last debacle. Then I need to arrange a diplomatic handler for those two envoys from the Makar and the Narai. What was that? Gimme Box. Boss. And why didn't you call me Gimme Box? I didn't call because it's not all good news. I can hear the news after! Gimme Box! Oh my god, they're just like you described! So tiny. So fluffy. So beans! Okay, what's their deal? Xenoscientist Jones reports that with the correct diet of plants, the specimens could live up to 50 without the need of any genetic alteration. That's great! Any other observations? In their native biome, they wrap themselves around the stems of berry plants as juveniles and eventually the limbs and trunks of fruit trees as adults. Their large eyes have evolved not only to be excellent at determining distance, but also sudden motion and colour, because they feed by snatching fruit mid-air right as it falls from the vines, which for many of the native flora on their planet is also when that fruit is at its optimum caloric density. Clever little cat snake bastards. This means that they can minimize the amount of energy that they expend on hunting and can instead use that energy on play. Play? Yes, family groups often ascend from the tree canopies to ground level to explore and co-mingle, as the previous report stated they are extremely companionable and often cohabit with other species. Apparently they resolve disputes through a sort of competitive tickling. Well, none of this sounds like bad news, this sounds like good news, this sounds like great news, this sounds like the best news! What's the problem? The average number of individuals to a family group, including juveniles, is 40. 40? But... But you said these things grow up to two meters long. Seriously, 40? Apparently the collective known for them is a puddle in which they all cuddle. We're master engineers and geneticists. This is not a deal breaker. Boss. Tailoring food to meet your dietary requirements would be easy, but we can't splice out your meat to be in big social groups without making you less companionable as a result now, can we? Correct, so... So maybe we can't keep you in our homes. That's okay, we don't need to be together together, we just need to build a paradise dome on every habitat world we have! Boss, we already have a paradise dome on every one of our habitat worlds. Then we'll build more! Domes or habitats? Both! Build more habitats and fill them with domes! Boss! You're right, that's insane. Let's replace all the advanced research complex with domes. It's not like we need to know anything else! Boss, even an entire paradise dome pair puddle wouldn't do the trick. Why? It's not just that they aren't built for spacefaring. It's not just about the food or climate. It's about roaming territory, enrichment. It's being part of an ecosystem with other species they can interact with. Don't say it. Boss. Don't you say it! Boss. I don't want to hear it! Boss, we can't keep them! But I love them! <laughs> Damn it, boss! I love them too! Don't make this harder than it is! But, but it's like Xenoscientist Jones wrote in his report. If you love a snuggle lump, let them go. Nah, fuck that, actually. Redirect all of our research into climate restoration technology and ask Jones what it's going to take to get a breeding program for these little critters organized until we can build them a Gaia world. Or we could do that, aye. 